Welcome to episode eight of my building the HMS Victory. And even though it doesn't look too much different on the screen now, I've been doing a lot of work on the masts, the yards and booms. And so it's not gonna be that much structural difference on the ship itself, but I think it'll be some helpful information if you're currently starting to build this ship or considering building it in the future. As this segment begins to play through, for some reason there's a little bit of a hum in the background on the video. I'm going to try and edit it out, but uh, I wanted to apologize for the audio difficulties in this segment. With that in mind, let's see how I got to this point. When making the masts, uh, the instruction sheet, if you take your time and look at it, it does tell you all the dimensions. They're in centimeters. Now I listed on here for some of you inches to give you an idea but really it's it's easier if you work it into to the centimeters because it evens out measuring the measurements are from the deck and that's this line here so you'll need to leave it a little extra however much it goes down into the hull of the ship it's not very far but you can you can play with that and figure it out the total length of all of these segments, there's three segments, when they're put together on the main mast will be a total of about 10.4 inches, so about 10 and a half inches. When you break it down into the segments, the lowest segment is 4.88 inches or 124 centimeters. And it needs to be tapered down to 4.5 millimeters. So that's what I'm in the process of because there's a little piece that hooks these two together and there's another one up here to hook those together. I've got to get that fit on there. Now the nice thing is you have the piece so you'll know when it's the right size. How I've made each one of these is putting a very small, very shallow hole center of the dowel. That's going to take into the uh, holder on the right side and then just barely inserting it here and getting it so it turns straight and insert just the tip of that in the hole. Tighten this down. Now just do this maybe just one little ratchet. It's not really in there that tight because I don't want to damage it. And what's worked really well is just taking sandpaper. This is um, 120 grit and just sanding that down to the size I want. Just fitting on the end so I know the tip has got the right diameter. Now I just need to make it so it can slide in a little further. So these are part W4, and obviously there's three of them, one for each mast. Recognize that the drawing is not to scale. So when you work in centimeters, for example, 124 centimeters, well, the 10 on this marker is really 100 centimeters. So 124 would just be the 100 would be 10, because there's 10 per segment, so that's 100 centimeters, 110, 120, and then four more marks. So this would go down to right about there, and I'll have a little bit to cut off. So I hope that helps explain that, and then the platforms, it shows exactly where they go, and how far down from this particular mark. I made an error on the stern mast because I thought that was all the way down and actually there's another hole that that slips down into. There it is. So it's about eight uh, millimeters shy of the height that it should be. So I'm just going to remake this one. And this time I'll make sure that I get it all the way down most part of the masts they're very tiny I didn't have a dowel that small so I've had to try and 
taper it down completely to get it to fit. And it's too small to even use this piece. So what I've done is taken the sandpaper and then I take a piece of paper towel and gently try and push down and keep it steady. Otherwise it overheats. <laughs> got some fine tuning and I'll straighten them up with uh, when I glue them but I do have all three made so now I'm ready to move on to the next step here's an example of the cargo that I made and I used the metal one kind of as a guide to give me an idea of how things would stack but this particular ship model is even smaller than the scale so I made smaller ones and I'll use less See if I can hold steady and give you an idea what it looks like. And you have to realize that's an extreme close-up. Here's the cargo in place. And I may add more. I can scoot this back. I haven't really glued it in. I'm just trying to decide how far forward or how far backward I want it to be. So I may scoot it in. Whoopsie. <laughs> Got caught. May scoot it a little bit more, that piece just came loose, but that's okay because I can adjust it. But that gives you an idea of what I'm talking about on cargo. And, you know, I may put some back in here in different places, but that'll be uh, probably after this video is complete, I'll continue to do little updates or upgrades as time goes by. So here's a very primitive cannon base, and here's a cannon. I'm a little concerned that the cannon is a little oversized. Now the coloration in this shot is a little off because this looks greenish and really it's black with a hint of gold. Um, so this is that top forward cannon port. And uh, that's kind of it in place. So that's uh, that's my attempt at making cannons. Again, this is my first attempt, so we'll see as time goes on. This is a little different angle, and I think the coloration looks more what it actually is. I think it could have been a little bit smaller, but uh, I'll show you all of them when I get them complete. As a beginning modeler, I don't have all the terms down. I thought these were booms or yards that go across and the only thing I can find on the instructions are things that are called sail poles. There's no visual instruction for the for the mast there's visual instructions but for all the sail uh, supports they're just these terms so what I believe I've figured out, I need to make one of each of these, and it does give the size. So that's what I'm going to do, and you can see I've got quite a few to make. I just happen to have this handy dandy slide measuring device. I have no idea where I ever picked it up at way many years before I started modeling. And it will measure the diameter, so I can confirm this one is five millimeters. This is three millimeters. And this tiniest one is two millimeters. So the markings are right there. So I have started to cut these to length. I took this part of the instruction sheet, enlarged it a little bit, then cut out each section and put a divider and I've made each one of those um, sail supports on here they're called sail poles so I have these organized now I'm going to stain them I've also in the past on some of the masts and these two I use the same flaming technique to darken them a little bit and give them some age so let me show you on a couple of them so I keep a wet paper towel on hand 
and the propane torch. I do hold it with a pair of pliers and then just run the flame, keeping an eye on it, making sure it does not catch on fire. Now I will still also stain this. This just gives me some unique age markings. And it's almost, you know, it's like artwork. The more you work at it, you see different patterns that you like better. That was a spot that got a little overheated. But again, that'll still work. It'll just be a very dark spot on the, on the wood. And I also do it with the very small ones. You have to be careful with them because they uh, it doesn't take much. I hope that helps if someone's uh, struggling with the mast and the yards and the booms. I've uh, burnished them or whatever you want to call it. I scorched them a little bit. I only messed up one. I held the torch on this one a little bit too long and it bent. So be careful on those little ones, but I can remake him pretty easily. So now I'll put them in stain and uh, see how they turn out. I'm going to insert this uh, addition before I go any further because I missed a step. I did not taper these down and I suppose you could leave them squared off if you don't have the equipment, but this mini lathe takes care of it. You could also use a, just a drill by gently putting one end in and then sanding down the edge. So I'll need to do that and then restain those a little bit, but I wanted to insert that before you get too far in your build and miss that step. I should have done it before I did the burning and the staining. I've only flamed a few things in the past. This is the first time I've done it on large scale testing it and it did make it so that the wood would absorb the stain a lot more. So they're very dark. I prefer dark myself. There is some variance to it. If you look close, you can see on these back here, but some are very dark. Excuse the stain, but I put aluminum foil in here so I could keep the trays and it leaked out a little bit, but it still worked pretty well. So I have them all stained now and it's a matter of sorting on which mass they go. So that'll be the next step and that'll be in episode 9. Hopefully you can tell that my abilities are improving with each ship build. I'm really happy with this particular model. Yes, the instructions are weak, but part of model ship building is learning and educating yourself on what actually goes in a ship. I don't know it all yet, but I continue to improve with each ship that I build. So that's it for episode 8. And I'll be working on episode 9. Matter of fact, I'm working on it as I'm filming this now. As always, thanks for watching.